Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, just put a little chat in the chat box so I can see who's all here. We're going to begin in just a second, and Curious to see how the audio is. All right, you can see me, Sophie. And can you hear me okay? Great. This is somewhat of a test if you haven't noticed yet. Have, uh, is the response time pretty good? Is my lips in sync with what you're hearing? Yes. Okay. So that took quite a while until I saw your chat. I wonder how quickly. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question, Sophie. And as soon as you hear the question, type it in right away and hit enter so I know how quickly you can hear me. Okay. So the question is what time is it for you right now? Okay, I still don't see it. It's been about 10 seconds, 15 seconds maybe. I see the word okay. Eight oh six p.m. Okay, there we go. So that took almost 15, 20 seconds or so. Um, all right, so I guess there's a, a lag in the time that I received the chat which is interesting. I have a pretty fast internet connection right now, so uh, let's see if... All right, let's try one more test here, and then I'll, then I'll just get started. All right, uh, let's see. Where, what city are you in right now? Wow, in been 30 seconds so far. I still haven't seen your answer in the chat. Morris Tom, 35 seconds. Okay. <laughs> um, so the idea here is that if you ask a question, know that it could take 30 seconds until I see your question. Uh, and please feel free to ask questions, and I will um, try to address them. Aha, typo. I got it, Morris Tom. Okay. Let me just think here for a second before we begin. <clears throat> 
Greetings, everyone. I'm Mike McQueen, your friendly teacher librarian, and welcome to my webinar about my book, Getting Boys to Read, Quick Tips for Parents and Teachers. This coming Tuesday, April 29th, 2014, is my big book launch on Amazon. And the goal in this webinar is to kind of give you a little bit of background information about my book, maybe a little bit about me, and a little bit about what what's going on with the big book launch on Tuesday. Uh, if you'll notice on the side there'll be a chance for you to ask questions in the chat box and there's a little bit of a delay um, unless things improve it's about a 30 second delay so if you ask me any questions just um, I, and I may have to wait until a little bit later to address the questions so just be patient. Alright let's begin with a little background about me. As a kid growing up I struggled with reading. I wasn't a very good reader and I had, and more importantly, I had a bad attitude about reading. And that hurt me in all academic areas of my life, especially as I got older. There were a lot of things that were happening in my life that I didn't know should have been happening uh, with regard to the adults in my life. My teachers at school didn't really know some of the techniques and things that they could have done to help me with reading. My parents, my mom tried. She, I remember her bringing me to the public library, and uh, I remember watching her read. But as a boy, I just didn't connect with reading the way I could have. Uh, a big part of that gap, I think, had to do with the lack of male uh, role model readers in my life. I never saw my stepdad reading. There, I don't remember if I even had any male teachers, and I think about it, growing up in elementary school. and. Um, I for sure didn't see any male readers around me and the the female teachers that I did have they just didn't they just didn't know a lot of the things that they should have known or could have known uh, to help me with reading so fast forward years later in college I decided to become a teacher and then got a teaching job and even though I didn't think I liked to read found out that I did like to read um, and fell in love with reading when I was a classroom teacher. That's really when I fell in love with it. And But I still didn't really know a lot of things about boys with reading. Some of the habits and things that I did in my classroom weren't really what was best for boys. And it wasn't until I became a librarian that I learned about these techniques. I went to a, a session, um, a training session with Anne Garan. She taught me in like 45 minutes some of the basic fundamental things about boys with reading. And that's where it all began. That's really where my interest came. I just became on fire. Actually, I got very upset when I realized these things. I got upset that I things could have been different for me growing up with reading and for all my academic areas. So that's really what started my passion for getting boys to read. I, shortly after that, I launched the website gettingboystoread.com and I started blogging. I started writing tips and short things in blog posts about boys with reading. Things for librarians, for teachers, and for parents. And and that kind of just kept growing. It became popular and more popular. And then after three or four years, I decided, hey, I should put these tips into a book. Along that route, I started interviewing other authors and you know, going to seminars and talking with parents, of course, talking with boys, all these different things to learn. Just keep educating myself about what the elements are with boys in reading. And, and let's see, it was about two and a half years ago, I... I started jotting down all my ideas into every medium I could think of. I wrote down notes on paper. I, I used my smartphone a lot. I typed different ideas about what I wanted to include in my book and talked to a lot of teachers, including my wife, who at that time was teaching fourth grade, and narrowed down the focus of the book to quick tips. And uh, my wife, Jeannie, she gave me a great idea that parents and teachers are busy, they, if you make the book in something that is very practical, that they could use instantly at home or in the classroom, that would be really beneficial. So that kind of set the tone. I'm like, hey, that would be great. I'll make these tips that you could read uh, in just a few minutes and instantly use them in the classroom. So that was the foundation for how the book came to be. And then what happened was we had a budget crisis in our district. And for an entire year, I stopped working on the book. I had maybe 60 or 70 percent done, and at least in rough draft format, and then I completely stopped on it to try to save school libraries from budget cuts. And uh, when that year was over, then another crisis came about trying to elect the right school board members, which is a whole other story. But anyway, when that school board election ended just this last November, that's when I finally got back on the bandwagon. By that point, I was a 
well, I thought I was about 90% done with the book, and I just uh, I launched a crowdfunding campaign to help me hire uh, book editors and a book coach and to get the book printed. And from December 4th, when my crowdfunding campaign ended, up until about the end of February, I intensely tweaked and fine-tuned and put the final touches on the book and had it edited and it was a painstaking process but it finally got done and printed and now I'm ready to launch it so on Tuesday is my big Amazon book launch I'll, I'll tell you about the, a little bit about it and then I want to show you some samples from the book on Tuesday my goal is to try to get 300 different people to purchase the book on Amazon and the reason that I'm aiming for 300 is because my research I did some research and it's not 100% accurate, but as the best I could find out is that if I get 300 people to buy it on Tuesday, there's a good chance that I could make the Amazon bestseller list, and that's my goal. Uh, my goal is really just to get 300 people, but if my book can make it to the Amazon bestseller list, then uh, that's something that I'll be able to promote for the rest of my life, that my book made it uh, on the list. And to make it on the list, you have to be in the top 100 sales in a 24-hour period. So on Tuesday, if I can sell 300 copies, there's a good chance that I'll make it in the top 100, which would let me call it an Amazon bestseller. Um, excuse me. So that's that's kind of the idea. Uh, along the route of writing the book, I spent quite a bit of late nights, uh, time before school, during my lunchtime, every chance I could get, because I'm a full-time teacher librarian still. So I just it's not easy to moonlight as an author and. My family was so supportive. There, there were basically two things that I did besides working at all these odd times. Uh, that, I guess writing the book was mostly at these odd times. It would be in, you know, late at night, and m so much of it came from my phone, uh, writing down the ideas. And then the other two areas, so I guess that would make three. One is here and there all over my house in the middle of the night and before school, uh, in my truck, maybe that's four, in my truck during lunchtime, and then at... Uh, the other two then would be in my RV, so I have a recreational vehicle, and I would go on author retreats, and quite often I would go to Idaho Springs, Colorado, which is not too far, and I would camp, and I'd write and work on it in my own kind of zone, and go for hikes and all that kind of stuff. So that was a, a big part of the process over the last two years, too, whenever I would get a chance. And then where I am right now. I'm in Old Town, Arvada, and at least once a week, well usually just once a week, I would get a work work night is what we called it. And during work work night I would often ride my bicycle with my backpack and my laptop uh, into Old Town, Arvada here and just work. Sometimes I go to the library which is behind me. Uh, quite often I'd go to a coffee shop and there were some different restaurants in the, in the neighborhood that I would go to. So that that's really kinda how I would do my getaways into working on the book. So. Uh, let's see. Any questions so far? Let's look. Should a book like that be in the classroom every day teaching? For everyday teaching? Yes. I mean, I wrote this book. This, the, the, the goal that I had in mind with this book is that I could give real specific tips and techniques that would work for both teachers and for parents that they could instantly use. And for any boys, boys of any age, and that was not easy because some of the techniques, there are some of the techniques that will work specifically for different age level boys, but in general, that was the goal that I had, or all the tips, is to have them work for any boy uh, at any level and for any type of educator and any, any parent that wants to help their boys with reading. Even on top of that, I had a friend of mine, Marsha Reese, uh, she asked me if some of these techniques would work with adult men who needed help with reading. Her brother had has a reading disability and he needed help with reading and I started looking at some of the techniques and yeah some of them did work for adult men too so um, that was another thing during the whole process of writing the book is I did talk with a lot of men about reading and find out what types of feelings and issues they had about reading and it's just very amazing the consistency I saw in both boys and adults with uh, what they view as reading and what some of the issues and things that they like to read and anyway um, all right, good question. Bring bring on some more if you have some more questions. Let me uh, let me just show you first of all in print. This this first version of the print is is in the cover is in black and white, of course. But the the pages, I mean the the cover is in color, 
and the pages are in black and white. And this page right here, uh, this is an example of one of the tips. It's just basically, this tip is called take a team approach. Uh, this is Lisa Hughes, one of the teachers that I work with, and one of my days in teaching. She came up to me and told me a story about how she needed help with some of her boys that were worth reading. And she gave me on these little note cards some of the topics about the, that the boys were interested in that they wanted to research. And so I helped. I coordinated some other people. And we pulled some books for these boys that were really fitting with what they wanted to. And it just dawned on me that the point was is, is that she's a superstar teacher, but yet still she reached out for help. And that, that gave me the idea. I'm like, you know what? Other people need to do that too. They need to... to not try to tackle the problem alone, and that's why the, that's where the team approach tip came from. Uh, another that was I don't remember what number tip that was, but altogether there's 114 different tips. I had more, but man, I just had to cut off cut myself off so uh, that I could get the book done. But in the book there are also interviews. This one this interview here is with uh, Jim Trulise. He's the author of the Read Aloud Handbook, and I interviewed. Golly, I must have interviewed 15 or 20 different authors during the course of the last few years, and I, I wasn't able to put all of them into the book, but I, pick and, I picked and chose different interviews that I did that related to the different chapters of the book. And Jim Trulise, you know, his book has sold a couple million copies, and his interview was just spectacular. I loved it so much. And in the book, in my book, I only included a small part of our interview uh, in text format, of course, because I couldn't put the whole interview in there. So I put a link in and throughout the book, every time you see an interview, then there's a link that will take you that will take you to my website where you can listen to the whole entire interview. So that was uh, I just I love the interviews. It kind of blends some practical ideas with some research based techniques. And then another tip I want to show you here is tip number ninety four, keep him reading during the summer. Now this this tip came inspired by Glenn Todd, another teacher that I work with. I did an audio interview with him recently that is going to be on my website here, hopefully this weekend, that where he described what he did with his kids during the summer. He set up this cool summer reading program. And um, anyway, you know, part of the, the goal with writing this book is that I, I based the, the whole book on not only the experiences that I went through as a boy struggling and like what I would have loved to have teachers and parents do with me, but then I also wrote it from the perspective of my experience as a teacher and a librarian. Not only just with the, the boys that I work with, and some of them are actually in my book, and also the perspective of the teachers that I work with and different ideas and things that I saw that, that teachers did well and things that I saw that some teachers didn't do so well. So all that kind of helped mold the idea of, of the book. Okay, uh, I see another question here. Special Ed could use the book too. Yeah, I've already gotten great feedback from different special education teachers about how much um, they love the book. I, I, I launched an early release and had a handful of people read it and give me some input and feedback on it and that was one thing that I heard. Um, okay, what I'm going to try to do now, this this um, webinar is going to be done here in just a few minutes, but what I thought might be fun would be to show you, to show you my computer screen and show you the the ebook version of it. I don't have the ebook version available yet. That's going to come, but uh, there's a couple things I wanted to point out with uh, with the ebook version that I want to show you. Actually, with the book version. So let me just see if I can share my screen here. Uh, just bear with me one second. Uh, what we're going to be looking at here is a PDF version of my screen, and um, so in my all right, let's see if it'll flip around here. There we go. Okay, so this is the table of contents of of my book. Oops, the table of contents at a, a glance. Ha, of course, I lost it now. Let's see. Oh, another thing about the book is that Michael Gurian, he is probably the best known author of gender-based education. He wrote the, the foreword for it and I was so excited when I found that out that he wrote, was going to write the foreword on it because um, he's such an industry expert on it. So, Okay, so the contents on a glass with glance, what's special about this is that it, this is basically each chapter in the book and I set it up as the seven most important things that anyone could do to try to help boys with reading. Okay, let me see if I can scroll a little bit here. 
Okay. So if, if you were to try to ask for seven steps in order of something that you could do to help boys with reading, these would be the seven steps. Number one, create the right environment. Strengthen your relationship with him. Connect him with his reading, with his interests and needs. So connect reading, different types of reading, with the stuff that he's interested in and stuff that he wants, which are a little bit different. Lure him with the best materials. Uh, this is just such an important chapter right here is to connect him with the right materials. How to make reading interactive, especially because boys are so active, and if you can make it interactive, that it makes it more effective. Making it fun, boys have to have a good attitude about it, and then different techniques, which is just a potpourri of different ideas. And, you know, the idea is that if you first start off with your environment, either at school or at home, and you make the environment feel welcoming and be appealing and be reading and literacy focused, that is, that's the beginning stages, that's the foundation. So these chapters don't necessarily mean that they're in order, of, in order of importance, but more of a chronological process, I guess. Uh, chapter two, strengthen your relationship. You know, to me, I've always worked in at-risk schools my whole career, 20 years now, and anytime I want to try to reach any kid that is struggling, no matter what the reason is, whether it's behavior problems or reading problems, math, it doesn't matter. Once I connect on a, a, on a personal level with that student, then anything can happen. That's good. And for reading with boys, that's a big factor is to, to strengthen relationship with them. Okay, but that's basically it. Uh, I mean, that's enough. I'll, you know, in the detailed table of contents, when you scroll down, you can see that each of the, you can see the actual names of the tips. M recruiting male role models, I think, is really, really, really important. These first two, the importance of reading aloud every day and recruiting male role models. Let's just uh, take a look at that. And the way the ebook is going to work is if you click on the tip, it just jumps right to the tip. Um, I mentioned a little bit at the beginning of this webinar about how important having positive male role models is. And um, this is kind of how the tips are set up. You know, basically up at the top tells you the tip number, the name of the tip, and then just a short little paragraph about what that uh, what that tip is. Uh, this student actually, he was a student of mine. His name is Jake, and I had him in elementary school for four years, and then he met up with me at my high school, and uh, I got to know him again a little bit better. And he's a special person in my life, and I tried to be a good role model to him for everything, and also uh, especially for reading. But and then another thing throughout the book, you'll see different links in here that will take you to different pages. So I'm still working on some of the things like. On my MikeMcQueen.com website, I have different videos that uh, link to um, different things specifically for boys. And in other situations, I have links that go to my uh, Getting Boys to Read website. Uh, let me show you another tip here. Tip number six, don't let him be a, become a screen zombie. I mean, I'm a technology fanatic. I love technology, but... It's important that parents and teachers know about how to limit and control boys, especially with video games, you know. So um, anyway, that kind of, I, I love this tip because I, I used a fun little app to make the, uh, the, <laughs> the fun zombie type uh, picture. But I don't know, you get the basic idea. At some point, I would like to release a, color, a full color version of the book um, as an e-book and as a, a print version um, because there's so many photographs in here. Uh, I also have this presentation that I give to different schools called Reading Rocks, and that the idea with this tip is, you know, I try to be a reading role model, and there's different things I have on both my websites that would help with that. Uh, what else here? Let's jump. Let's jump to a little bit later of a tip. Um, I included a lot of librarian friends of mine. This is Donna Oswald. Um, so, in library land, there's so much going on that librarians can can do both both the building of libraries, the room of libraries, and the people that are magical to libraries, uh, librarians, teacher librarians and public librarians. So it's libraries are a big part of who I am as a, an adult and as a professional educator. And I wanted to really showcase that in throughout the book. So you'll see it. There's lots of tips that relate to libraries and um, different, uh, I don't know, different, just different things that are fun. Uh, one more thing I could show you. This is my Facebook page, <laughs> and here is uh, my Getting Boys to Read website. So on my website right here is the link 
to buy the book. And the idea is if, you know, as many people as I can, um, if they click on this link, it will take you to the page that, that has a video that shows you the, how I first got the books and gives you a little bit of uh, information about um, when the book launch occurs. But this, it'll be on this page right here is where I'm going to put the, uh, the link that will take you right to the page on Amazon. So if you, if you look on Amazon right now, the book is available, but I'm asking everyone to wait to purchase it until Tuesday so that um, those sales will count toward the big, the big uh, bestseller campaign. Uh, of course, I have my e uh, email newsletter over here too. If you sign up for this webinar, you are automatically enrolled in my newsletter, and I wor I've been working on that as much as I can, but um, the thing I love about that is I showcase different books that a lot of boys like, and I'm just super proud of it. I think it's really cool. Okay, I'm going to jump back over here and turn off the screen sharing. Boy, it looks like I don't know too well if you got to see all of my other screens, but anyway... All right, let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, do any of my tips involve kids that don't speak English? And I didn't write any specific tips that relate to boys that are um, non-English speaking tips. But to be honest, a lot of the techniques in there, um, they really would support for anyone that struggles with reading. I, I, I went through a phase where I wasn't sure how what angle I was going to take with this book. I wanted to be broader and go with any struggling readers because boys kind of relate with that, but um, my point is, is that in my book there are a lot of tips that relate to people that are visual learners. Boys in nature are very visual uh, in what they, what they learn and what they do, so a lot of the tips uh, reflect that, and that would also be good for an ESL student. For example, one of my tips is to create a, a reading photo board, photography wall, and the idea with that tip is that either at home or at school teachers take pictures of boys reading, you know, actually reading or with their book, posing or natural pictures, just as many as you can and you just put them all over your wall. And since boys are so visual in nature, they'll, they'll enjoy seeing that and it also reinforces, you know, gives positive reinforcement or whatever. So for, for a student that is an ESL student, that, that tip would work great for them. Uh, that's the idea. So, okay, that's about it for this webinar, I encourage you to sign up. If you haven't already, sign up for my email newsletter, connect with me on Facebook, and please share this video with your friends and mark your calendar for Tuesday. I'm hoping to get 300 sales on Tuesday, and we'll see what happens. So thanks for watching. Uh, this is Mike McQueen signing off. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you soon.